Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at transient voltage input protection. And the circuit that we're going to look at can be used for a microcontroller for the GPIO inputs, or for the ADC, the analog to digital converter input, or for digital logic, like you can see on my breadboard, I have a CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate, which is configured as an inverter. Now, if you have an automotive project, or a motorcycle project, where you have a starting circuit, and a charging alternator circuit where large currents are involved, you're probably going to encounter some transient spikes. So this is my circuitry here. It contains four components. One, two, three, four. And they're very easy to get. And they're connected up to the input of my CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. So I have a, a transient voltage spike generator that could generate 130 volt spikes. And we'll hook it up to the input of my transient voltage protection circuit and see how it performs. Okay, so this is my transient voltage spike generator, and it can produce voltage spikes up to 130 volts peak to peak, plus or minus. This is my amplitude control, and this is my frequency control. And if you look at the scope, you can see the transient spike output. So we'll, we'll hook this up to my test circuit, my CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate, and we'll see how my transient voltage input protection circuitry performs. Okay, I got my circuit powered up and I'm injecting 130 volt transient spikes into the input and my output LED is flashing now I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up properly because my transient spikes are a very short duration but at the very input you can see my 130 volt transient spike pulse train then after the protection circuitry you can see the signal that's going into the CD4093 uh, Schmidt trigger NAND gate that the output is maxed at 5.1 volts and the minimum is negative 0.3 volts and if we look at the circuitry that's driving the LED you can see it's very clean uh, the pulses, they're negative going pulses that are sinking the current for the LED so next we're going to have a look at the schematic of my input protection circuitry okay here's the schematic diagram of my transient voltage protection circuitry so you can see at the very input I have a 5.6k series resistor then I have a 0.01 microfarad capacitor across the input that will shunt away any RF component, any high frequency transient. Then I have a 5.1 Zener diode, 1N4733A. So that will clamp this point at 5.1 volts. And the rest of the voltage of the transient will be dropped across the 5.6K ohm resistor, which is for current limiting. Now the reverse voltage will be about 0.6 or 0.7 volts because of the reverse voltage across the Zener and we want something even better than that so I put a shot key diode, a 1N5820 so the forward voltage is 0.3 volts so that will clamp the negative portion of the transient to 0.3 volts, negative so that input is going into the 4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate which is triggering the LED and I have a 1 mega ohm resistor just uh, to pull down the input uh, so it's not floating so this point here will have a maximum of 5.1 volts and a minimum of minus 0.3 volts which will drive this uh, circuitry properly the 4093 and activate the LED okay here's the data sheet for the CD4093 the Schmidt trigger NAND gate and we're looking at the maximum ratings if we go to the input voltage range all inputs we can see the, the maximum negative voltage is 0.5 volts and a maximum positive voltage is VDD plus 0.5 volts in our case, we were running it at 5 volts, so it would be 5.5 volts. So in our case, our maximum negative was 0.3 volts, and our maximum positive was 5.1 volts, because we used the Schottky diode for the negative voltage, and we used the Zener diode for the positive voltage. So we're okay for that spec. Now if you look down on the right-hand side, you can see it actually has protection uh, diodes inside the Schmidt trigger and AND gate itself, inside the chip. You can see we, could have, we have four diodes, and they're clamping the voltage to VDD. So if the voltage goes higher than VDD by 0.6 volts, it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, these diodes will conduct and will clamp the voltage by feeding it into the power rails. Now we're feeding voltage into power rails, we could actually uh, increase our voltage on our power rails if we don't have very, very good power supply. So by using our, our protection circuitry, it's relieving the stress on the circuit and it's not, not allowing any of the voltage to get into the, the power rails. Now we could go one step further and add another stage of protection. This is a MOV, a metal oxide varistor, and it goes right across the input of our circuit. Now sometimes they're called TVSs or transorbs, and what's inside this device are hundreds of Zener diodes back to back. 
So they actually absorb the transient energy and these things actually wear out over time if they get hit hard enough. So that's another way we could uh, protect the circuitry, another stage of protection. Okay, I have my MOV connected to my power supply. And as I turn up the voltage and it gets closer to the trigger point, it will start drawing current. Then it will short and it will kick out the overload on my power supply. So I'll turn up the voltage. See it's starting to draw current. Then she'll kick out my overload when it shorts. Okay, I have my scope connected across the MOV. And you can see it has lowered the 130 volt transient spikes to a lower level. And it's bidirectional as it lowered the positive and negative values. Okay, now you know how to build a transient voltage protection circuit using four components. So if you have a project living in a harsh environment and you're getting a lot of IC failures, then you could implement this circuit.